It's five o'clock on Wednesday, which means it's time for... Craig and Marlon's Magic Review Show. I'm Craig. I'm Marlon. Welcome back to another review show right here on... Magic TV. Absolutely Magic TV. Thank you once again for joining us right here on Magic TV. Every week we bring to you four or five new tricks that have been released to the Magic community. And uh, this week we've got a new penguin trick. Yeah. Uh, we've got a uh, we've got a new trip by Cyrus. We've got a new stage trip. We've got a whole bunch of stuff lined up this week. But we're going to start this review by looking at a new trick by Penguin Magic by P3, and one of your friends as well is releasing this. So hopefully you're not going to be biased about it. Let's have a look at this right now. So first up by Spooky Nyman. I've just had to explain to Ryland why it's Spooky Nyman and not Preston Nyman. But first up, by Spooky Nyman, we have uh, First Class. Now, this is being bought out by the guys at Penguin Magic. And this is a mind-reading trick. Um, it gives the ability to the, uh, to the person performing it to make it look like there's an incredible coincidence that takes place. Um, I'm not going to say any more about this trick yet. I just want you to see a live performance of it. Yeah. So this is a performance of First Class. Have a look at that, and then we'll talk right. about what we think. So, Ryan, I don't think you've ever worked a, uh, a trade show before, but I've been to quite a few trade shows. And about a year ago, I was booked to work for this travel company, and they were giving away a free holiday. Mm. And they even let me have a go. I didn't win a free holiday, unfortunately. But um, I, I did nick the cards off them at the end because I thought they were really cool. And these are the cards we're using to uh, give away a free holiday. This is uh, SN Airlines win a free trip to one of our incredible destinations. We're going to put that over there. And um, these are the cards I nicked. This is how people were choosing whether they were going to win a hit free holiday or not. And also where they were going to go to. Because what you actually have here is you have different cards and each one has a different destination. So we've got London, we've got Tokyo, Seoul, Milan, San Francisco, Rio de Janeiro, Amsterdam. I mean, there's a whole bunch of different places, right? All the way down. The, the, the interesting thing, the most exciting thing is in Chicago. It's not Cancun, even though that's nice. It's not Los Angeles. It's the last one, Party City. Party City, because when you go and you're hanging out with me, you're always in Party City. Stop laughing. <laughs> now, um, you're going to pick one of these destinations at random. And how you're going to do this is you're going to pick a number. Now, I'm pretty sure you didn't see many of the cards uh, and what numbers they were on. Don't pick 20 because we know it's Party City. Don't pick one because we know it's London. I'm pretty sure that you know two's Tokyo, so let's not go for that one. Uh, but it's totally up to you. What number would you like? Um, um, four. Four? That's quite low down, uh, quite high up. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. That one there, one, two, three, four. Do you want to change your mind or are you happy? I'm happy. You're happy. So what's four? Four is Paris, dude. Paris. That's exciting because we've recently just come back from Paris, haven't we? Yeah. Recently just come back from Paris. Uh, and you had a free choice and you, Paris is what you want, yes? Mm -hmm. Now think about this. You could have had any one. Um, you, I, I said not London, Tokyo, but if you'd said three, it would have been um, Bangkok, for example. If you'd said five, it would have been New York. Six would have been Seoul. Seven would have been Milan. Eight would have been Barcelona, San Francisco. You get the idea. You could have had any one of these. The choice was completely yours, right? Mm -hmm. But you went for number four, which just happens to be Paris. Mm -hmm. Here's yeah. what's interesting, my little man. What's interesting is this card. Because the person who played this game, they won a trip to Paris. Mm. Yeah, and I know this because on the other side, it says congratulations on your trip to Paris. How did you know? That's incredible. <laughs> so that's first class. Basically, in essence, what it allows you to do is force a destination in a very, very clean way on yeah. a spectator. And the cards that come with it are beautiful, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, they yeah. really look nice. Uh, Penguin have spent a lot of time making this look like the sort of thing that you would pick up. You know, when you use the presentation of, hey, I tried to win a holiday and I didn't really manage it. it, it you look at these cards and you'd think, yeah, I can buy into that, absolutely. Uh, it comes in its own little box, which is self-contained. You can put that into your pocket and it takes up no pocket space, but you're ready to go. So for people that like taking this sort of stuff like, EDC around this is this is you know this is quite compact doesn't take up much space now things that you need to be aware of number one 
Uh, it's relatively easy to do. There's not really any moves or any slight, there is a move, but there's not really any sleight of hand in there. Um, it's quite easy to do, to be perfectly honest. Uh, there's not really any, any angle restrictions. You are gonna need a table, but you don't need any particular surface to perform it on. Um, and the only reason you need a table is to put things down on it. The method is really clever. I'd never seen the method before. I'd never even seen like the way of doing what he did. I watched the performance and I was a little bit fooled. I didn't really know how it had worked. And then when I was watching it, I was like, oh, that's really clever. Um, I think that the best way to use this is in the context of a longer routine. And what I mean by that is I think this would be, let's say you were talking about your perfect holiday destination and you were wanting them to decide where they were going to go, what they were going to do when they get there, who they were going to go with. And imagine that you did like, you know that book I use when I do uh, Parlour, Celebrity Prestige, yeah. which forces Tom Cruise. Imagine if you had this and a Celebrity Prestige. So you say, right, okay, so first of all, we're going on your dream holiday. We're going to decide who you're going to go with. Uh, here's a book of Celebrity Fails. Do me a favour, pick a celebrity. Who have we got? Tom Cruise. Brilliant. Okay, now we're going to decide where we're going to go. I've got these destinations. Where are we going to go? Paris. Okay, so I'm going with Tom Cruise to Paris. And what am I going to do when I get there? And maybe I use digital form bag to decide what I'm going to do when I get there. So I'm using three different forces and then I've got some sort of photoshopped picture of me and Tom Cruise in Paris skiing or something. That's the way that I would use this because I think this is great. I really like the method. I think it's very fooling. But I think as a, as a uh, at least for me personally, and I know Preston will probably kill with this, but for me personally, um, I think that I wouldn't do this as a standalone bit. I'd do it as kind of a longer routine, but I love the idea of putting together a confabulation routine using this as one of the elements. I think that uh, confabulation is one of my favorite bits to perform anyway. And I think if you had three different really cool forces and you were making up a perfect destination, I think this would be a really cool way to use this. Yeah. Th things that you need to be aware of, it's gonna have to be Paris every single time using the cards that you are given. Yeah. Uh, it has to be Paris. But one thing that Preston talks about on the tutorial, tutorial, by the way, is about 25 minutes long. It's really good. He goes yeah. through everything with a fine tooth comb. Uh, Spooky, not Preston, sorry. Spooky is a great uh, uh, a teacher, as you would expect. Um, and, uh, you know, there's live performances, as you would expect from a Penguin product. So the, the, the tutorial is great. You'll get it, no problem. Um, which is which is which is which is really good. But yeah, on the tutorial, Preston or Spooky teaches how to um, uh, how to make this up for anything. So how you can take blank cards, for example, double blank cards, or you know, blank playing cards or file cards or business cards or whatever, and how you can use this to force anything, which is really really cool, doesn't isn't it? Yeah. So he'll teach you like let's say. Uh, you want to force a type of table. Yeah, like, or let's say, you know, Ryland's favourite thing to do. And you can have cards that say, cubing, playing on the switch, doing magic, Football. picking on his sister, <laughs> football, eating. And then, and then you, you, you know, you set the force up so that, uh, you know, the winning card is farting, you know, <laughs> which is ultimately his favourite thing in the whole world. Um, that is a way that you could go with this. So this is, this is adaptable. Once you understand how this works, you can very easily adapt it to, uh, to, to, to anything. You're not going to have the really nice specially printed cards, but you are going to be able to set it up for anything. And the amount of people that I see on the internet that are like, hey, I want to force this and I don't want to use digital force bag. Has anybody got another method? Yes, I have. Anybody who asks that question from now on, buy this and you can use this method to force absolutely anything. So yeah, for me, I, I want to know what you think because I know you impress to the friends so hopefully you won't be biased um but for me i love it i wouldn't do it as a standalone bit even though i think the hook is great i love the hook of hey you know i saw these it i thought I was gonna... it did fool you yeah. yeah 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 i thought it would have done it fooled me um but even though i love the hook line and i love the trick and it's very fooling and the revelation built into the card is nice i plan on using this but i plan on using it as a confabulation what do you think of it i want to know what your thoughts are I think it's very, very clever. You, you like it? Yeah. Have you ever seen anything kind of like this before? Because I haven't really. I don't think so. No. Um, so the question is, do you have any questions about this? Or is there anything else that we haven't covered? I think we've covered pretty much everything. 
Yeah. Would you do this? Is this would this work on stage? Maybe. It's definitely a close up trick. Maybe. Maybe. If you had a whiteboard with the prediction on. A whiteboard? Yeah, and draw the Eiffel uh The Eiffel Tower. Yeah, show the Eiffel Tower with a bunch of like buildings. That's really good. Hey, I remember Alakazam brought out this thing called Bip Test ages ago, 2.0, which is a great trick. We should do that on the Hidden Gems. Anyway, um, one of the parts of that was forcing Paris and then asking them to think of a monument in Paris. So, and, and pretty much everybody thinks of the Eiffel Tower because if you think of a monument, they're always going to think of, of the Eiffel Tower, right? It would, maybe there's a way of doing this so you, you show them the card that they've picked without you even seeing it. So as you take it out and do it, you, 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 put, you look away. So they know that they've thought of Paris, but you don't know they've thought of Paris. Oh, and just like... And then you say to them, when they know that they're thinking of Paris, you go, now think of, uh, 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 think of a monument that, that... Can you think of a monument that's like really well associated with that, with that city? And they're going to go, yeah. And you go, brilliant. And you've got the deck of cards that you've been using for the rest of your act. And remember, you went to Paris this weekend and you bought a Paris deck. You bought a deck of cards, but where the uh, angels are, it's, a, it's an Eiffel Tower. So imagine you've been doing card tricks. And as you go into this, you do a deck switch and you just put the cards face up on the table. You do this whole Paris thing and, you, and then you have, them think of a, uh, you have them think of a monument. And then you take the deck that you've been using and you rub... <sighs> And now the cards have changed to the Eiffel Tower, and they've thought of every that that, that yeah, they had a free choice of city and a free choice of monuments, and now the entire deck has changed to match the thing that they're thinking of. That's good. You should do that. Yeah. That's killer. That's really good. Yes, yes. Can you imagine just having the deck? Because you've got a deck of cards where they're all Eiffel Tower instead of angels. That would be awesome. You need to put that together. You need to put that together. Okay, so what are you going to give this? Um, I'm going to. I'm excited about doing this. I, I, it's, it's made me excited about putting a new confabulation together, and I know exactly that where this is going to go. Um, so for me, I'm going to give this ninety five percent. I think it's brilliant. I think it's awesome. Um, you know, Preston's really great uh, magician, really great creator. It's in his genes, literally. It's in his genes. He keeps his creativity in his genes. Ninety five percent. What are you giving it? Uh, I'm going to give it. Hundred? Ninety-eight. Ninety-eight. Yeah, ninety-eight. She's not going to like you anymore. <laughs> Doesn't like you anymore. Next time he sees you in a convention, he's going to walk past you and go, "You're dead to me." Ninety-eight <laughs> percent from Ryan. Ninety-five percent from uh, from me. This is a really good trick. It has a lot of uses when you actually sit down and think about it. There's a lot you can do with it. Wait, this. did you say ninety-five percent from Ryan? Ninety-eight percent. No, I said ninety-five percent from me. Ninety-eight percent from no, Ryan. Didn't. Well, I'm old and I make mistakes. I don't know. Who cares? Let's move on with the next review. Okay, so next up we have, what's it called? The swing thing. Swing, ring, swing thing. Ring, swing, thing by Cyrus Magic. This is by Cyrus. Um, the ring. I know you like Cyrus. I know you've we've seen a lot of the stuff that uh, he's brought out before that you've liked. The, the, uh, the dice trick that you used to do, I don't think you do it anymore, with the cardboard dice. Uh, the, 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 that, that Cyrus. You know Cyrus. You saw, you were watching him at um, Blackpool. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I went over to Cyrus's stand at Blackpool and I saw him deming this and he had a massive crowd around him and, and he was just like deming the hell out of this and everybody was just handing him money. It was like the Pied Piper. It was amazing. Um, and uh, I saw this actually a little bit earlier on than that. I saw it at the Magic Circle in London and, um, and he performed it at the Magic Circle in London and uh, I loved it. I thought it was really good. Um, so what is it? Well, it's based on an old classic trick, but he's brought it bang up to date. It's kind of the sort of thing that I like to do. He's taken something that's as old as but the it, hills. I like it better. You like it better than my stuff because it's not long and boring, I know. <laughs> he's taken uh, a classic trick that's been around since time began. And what he's done is he's routined it into a nice little four-phase routine um, that really kind of is strong, really yeah. strong. Yeah. Um, now, in a second, you're going to see a performance of me doing it. I would like to tell you, I haven't actually learned the final phase yet. So this hasn't been gigged. I do want to gig this, but this hasn't been gigged yet because I don't have the final phase down. 
I can do it like 70% of the time, so I'm working on that. But I did want to put this review up, so I want to I want to let you know that the final phase isn't there. I'll talk you through what the final phase is in a bit. Um, but let's have a look at live performance of this. So this is the ring swing thing by Cyrus Magic. Okay, right, so I've got this uh, this chain, the sort of chain that you'd wear around your neck, yeah? yeah. Uh, it's got a clasp there, but we're not going to undo the clasp. This is a solid ring, uh, a solid chain, yeah? And, and have a look at this ring. Check it out, make sure it's solid. And then I don't want you to think that the ring and the chain are magnetic. So I want you to just touch the two together, maybe go fishing and see if you can hook the ring onto the chain. You try it, do everything. Is it fair? It's cool, right? Yeah? Mm -hmm. No magnets? No. Good. So here's what we're gonna do. You might not realize this, but this chain, uh, well, actually the ring is voice activated. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna program it to you. Hold it in your hand, look at it, and just say nice and loud the word stop. Stop. Very good. So now this is what's going to happen. Cup your hands together. If I put the ring here on the chain and I drop it, what's going to happen? It's going to drop. Exactly. This is not magic. This is gravity. If I drop it, science actually. it's going to drop. Yeah, but science is gravity. <laughs> no, science. Now, all you have to do is we'll try it this time but uh, i'm going to count to three i'm going to drop it i want you to say the word stop keep your hands cupped open one two three stop check that out now it's not like it's a magnet it really is tied on there in fact not only is it tied on there you can see it's actually tied in three separate places now the only way to get this off would be to go through there take it off i mean it's tied on there but we'll see if we can do it in a bit of a more magical way. You see the three places where it's tied on. Can you see that? Yeah. We'll try and make it penetrate up on three. One, two, three. So now it's just through two of them. But I tell you what, move one hand out of the way and put your finger through the ring. Move the other hand out of the way and curl your finger in tightly. Is there any way to get that ring off? It's not, right? Well, There's no. Go, yeah. yeah, but you're not going to let go. And yet I'm going to do that and the ring will come right off. And that, my little friend, is a miracle. <laughs> so that is uh, the ring swing thing. Now, uh, I think that performance was okay, but I think it's gonna get better as I do it. Uh, it's, it's a fun routine to perform. Now, the four phases, the first phase is the one where the ring hooks onto the chain. Now, that's a really old bit that I first saw, I think, Daryl doing a ring and, uh, ring and rope routine. Um, and it used a ring and a rope, obviously. This is using a chain and a, and a ring, but th this, is, this is as old as the hills. What I love is the presentation Cyrus has put to it, getting them to think stop, and when they think stop, it gets hooked on. And in the performances, because there's a few live performances, which I love. He's got live performances at the Magic Castle to Brendan Rodriguez, which is so cool to watch Brendan's face blown away. But then he's got live performances as well at gigs. I really, really appreciate that. Anyway, so the first phase, boom, it goes on. And when he's doing the live performances, he actually takes it off and does it again. Then the second phase is when it penetrates up through one of the uh, one of the strands. And the final phase is based on an old rubber band trick. And they put their finger through the ring. Oh, crazy man. It, we're kind of, but not really. And then boom, it just comes through. And I, I, I watched it. I was like, that's a really well-constructed routine. Now, the fourth phase that I didn't do, he then gives them the power to do this themselves. They hold out their hands. He puts the ring on their hands. Oh, I saw that. And, and he, he yeah. it. And, and they, they do tells it. them to just take that out their thumb, and it just and as they take out the thumb, it connects. Yeah. Now Ryland didn't learn this. I did. And what's really annoying is after I showed him the performance of this, he said, "Oh, let me show you. Show me how it works." And I did. And within five seconds, he could do the whole routine without doing the uh, without doing the uh, without watching the tutorial, including the final phase. So I should have just done what I normally do these days and get you to perform it instead. But it would have been so much better. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's really strong, well-constructed routine. Now, you can get two of them from Cyrus. You can get the version that I just showed you, um, which is kind of what they call the EDC version, because which the whole idea... Yeah, you're, I know you're wanting this. Yeah, so you put the ring on the chain, 
and then you put it around. So you're carrying this around with you, it's and it's always around your neck. Yeah, so that just goes on, so and it connects. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, yeah. You just connect it like yeah, that. You just hook it on. Just, so you do the thing that you were doing the performance. Yeah. Um, now you see. Now you see. Yeah. Now you see. You learnt it, and now you've lost it. Yeah, you did that. You learned it last night, and then you completely forgot it. No. Uh, no. Give me the thing. Yeah. Give me the thing. You've forgotten how to do it now. Ha <laughs> ha. Was it a fluke when you did it a few times in a row? It was, wasn't it? No. Yes, it was. No. See, this is why you should watch a tutorial. You're doing the typical man thing and you're not watching the instructions and you're just going for it. Ta-da! <laughs> Give me the thing. <laughs> Give me the duck. Then you can put it around your neck. You have to learn this properly. Boop, boop, boop. Stop! <laughs> Got performance anxiety here. They're, they're... See, you've broken it. You've, you've cursed it now, Ryland. You've cursed it. What have you done? <laughs> You broke them. You broke them a chain. Stop playing with it. Stop playing with it. You broke them a chain. I'm doing this every single time. Hang on. Wait, 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 wait. Let's just finish this review. Let's just finish this review. Uh, you're going to be seeing me do this on a magic live. You're going to see me do this in a gig. This is great. So you get two versions. You get an EDC version which you can wear. You also get a parlor version with a bigger ring and uh, kind of a bigger chain, so you can do that more in a parlor a situation. Chain, yeah. No. It is. No, that's the smaller chain. This is the bigger chain. So you can do it in like a parlor situation if you want to. Um, but yeah, it's great. It's really good. I love how he's taken the classic and brought it bang up to date. Uh, it needs a little bit more practice from my side. Apparently, it needs a bit more practice from your side as well. But I'm definitely going to do this. Um, I don't think it's going to be something that I'm going to do all the time. But I do think I'm going to have it with me. And right time, right place. Look at the live performances on this project. It absolutely kills. I'm giving this 89%. What about you? 100%. Yeah. I knew that you'd love this. 100% from Ryland. Nice. 80... Cyrus, I'm going to need to buy another one of these because my <laughs> son has stolen them Hi. off me. Yeah, 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 whatever. 89% from Ryland. 100%. Would you stop playing with it? 89% from Ryland. 100... No, 100% from Ryland. 89% from me. We're going to move on and we're going to go... <laughs> we're going to move on with another trick. So next up, we have SCC by N2G. N2G, our favourite magic company who brings out lots of wonderful coins and seemingly can't explain how any of them work because their production value on their tutorials is literally in the toilet. And unfortunately, we have the same with this. We have a really cool trick that unfortunately is in the toilet when it comes to their tutorials. Um, you know, the, 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 honestly, somebody give N2G a 10p coin or something and let's see if they can get enough 10p coins to hire a venue where they can actually find somewhere or find someone to do the tutorials for them in a better way because they really suck. Honestly, they do. Having said that, um, with this one, at least you can kind of follow what's going on in the tutorial. If you don't know what it is, you get three gaffed, well, you get two gaffed coins and you get one regular coin. Uh, they're available in black and red. Yep. They match all the normal TCC coins. Um, so if you've got a TCC, uh, not a TCC, so if you, uh, they match all the normal N2G coins. So if you've got an N2G coin set, um, it will match that. Absolutely not a problem. And it's the old stretched uh, Chinese coin routine. Now, I remember originally seeing a coin like this from Joker Magic in the Blackpool Magic Convention about 15 years ago. Uh, what they've done with this is they've actually supplied two stretched coins, one that's kind of more stretched and one that's less stretched. And there's a few things that you can actually do with this. Yeah. One of the things that you can do is you can start off with two coins and with very little in the way of switching, you can, uh, you, can, you can stretch the first coin and then you can stretch the second coin. Yeah. And how they've done it is really good because you display the coins. They can't be examined at the beginning, but the way you display them, you're actually hiding the fact that one of them's already stretched. Yeah. So you give the other one to put somebody, stretch this one, give it out, take that one back, and then you do a switch. Yeah. But there's other handlings as well. There's other handlings where you take... Uh, uh, you take one coin, you stretch it to a certain length, and then you stretch it some more. That is going to involve some pocket management. Um, the tutorial isn't great. It's okay. It's probably the best of their tutorials, but it's still not brilliant. Um, they've tried to put a couple of different routines and different handlings in there. They haven't put a live performance on. Of course, they haven't put a live performance on. They never do. Um, Let's have a look at Rylan doing this. So, Ry, you used one of the handlings. You you really love this, don't you? Mm -hmm. You used one of the handlings on Instagram. And so you did this on Insta. 
Uh, let's have a look at Ryland's performance of it so you can see exactly what it looks like. Uh, and uh, this is taken from his Instagram account, so we'll have a look at that. And then when we've looked at that, uh, we'll bring it back in and give it a review. Yeah. I know you like your coin, Magic. It's nice. It's nice. It is really good. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, you watch the tutorial with me. What's the angles like? Uh, not really many angles, uh, apart from like the back and there. Yeah, it's not really too much of a problem. Um, the reset is fairly instant, depending on the routine yeah. that you do. Um, you might if, just have to put stuff back in your pockets and things. Yeah, just put, but a lot of them end up in the pocket where it needs to be. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't think this is a standalone trick. It could be. It could be an opener. You know, it could be, hey, let me show you a trick with a coin. There you go. Have a look at that. Isn't that cool? Now let's do a card trick. It could be an opener. But where I think the strength of this would lie, honestly, Ryland, yeah. is um, kind of as a kicker ending to a trick that you're doing with your N2G set. So let's say you're doing... I don't know, RBG or one of their coin sets where you're making coin jump all over the place or whatever it is that you're doing. You know, at the end of the routine, say, well, well, let me explain how these work. They look solid, right? But they stretch. Look, that one stretches like that. That one stretches like that. Here, you take this one and try and stretch it, can't you? Oh, well. Or something like that. Like, so it's kind of like the end of a, a coin set because I, th I feel this is a little bit like a jumbo coin. With yeah. the jumbo coins... You know, the thing with jumbo coins is that it makes a great finale to a coin routine. And honestly, and you know this because you've done it, when you go and you do a coin trick in a strolling environment, when you finish off with a jumbo coin, that's all anybody wants to look about. Yeah. Right? And I think we've got the same here. So, yes, this has the potential to be an opener. This has the potential to be something that you could use to transition into metal bending or coin vexed or something like that. But in reality, I think that the best way this is used is as a kicker finale to a yeah. coin routine. Yeah. So what are you going to give it, right? I'm interested. Um, I'm going to give it... I'm going to give it, say, 90%. 90%? Okay. I might do it. I think I might do it. You think you might do it? Yeah. 90%, yeah. I mean, to be honest, it packs small. It plays big. It fits in your pocket. It's not that difficult to do. Uh, the switches are relatively easy. Uh, the tutorial is okay. Better than most of the N2G tutorials. Not great, but not the worst. Um... And there's a few different ways you can go with it. And I think creative people will come up with uh, with ways of doing it. And just like N2G, the quality of the coins is really good. Yeah. Quality of the coins is really good. So, yeah, I'm going to give this... Uh, you know what? I'm thinking 90% as well. I think this is definitely a 90% trick. It's a good trick. Um, if you saw what you saw what it was, you just saw what it was. If you like the look of that and you want to incorporate it into your act, then this is the way to go. Yeah. 90%. Okay, so next up we have the appearing bottle by uh, George Inglesius, and uh, he is on a mission at Twister Magic to bring classics of magic up to real uh, modern times. And this is another example, another classic of magic brought to modern times by George Inglesius of Twister Magic, based on the classic squared circle illusion. Uh, George has created the appearing bottle. Two boxes that will produce any type of bottle in seconds. Great magic trick for your shows. Perfect for parlor, comedy, or stage. Um, so, I mean, he, we reviewed a little while ago, and it's there over there, uh, because yeah, it goes yeah. into your kid's show, doesn't it? Yeah. The vending machine, yeah. which we said was brilliant, which was another uh, George Iglesias trick, and it was taking the squared circle, turning it into what looked like a vending machine, so you could take out... Uh, yeah popcorn or sweets or you know a drink or whatever you wanted to bring out and that's brilliant and we were worried a little bit about the quality but we've took that to a few shows now quite a lot of shows and it's it's absolutely fine it's not a problem because all of these things are designed to pack small and play big although and you can talk about this in a minute um it's not a flat, flat pack it can be a flat pack but it's not a flat pack you have to make that decision as you're actually going through the tutorial don't you before we talk about that 
We'll show you a performance of it. This is another one that Ryland's done on Instagram. Um, so let's have a look at this video. This is another video of Ryland uh, performing the appearing bottle. We'll have a look at it and then we'll bring it back into the studio and give it a review. Okay, so bottle productions are just like really popular these days. Everybody's yeah. wanting to produce bottles. And normally it's a barehanded bottle production. So it's hidden somewhere on your body and you're producing it under a handkerchief or something like this. This is a production out of a box. Um, now, first of all, you spent more time on the tutorial for this one than I did. Uh, so I've got some questions for you. I want yeah. you to hook me up with them. Yeah. First of all, you told me um, that you had to make a decision as to whether it would pack flat or not. Do you want to explain yeah. what that so means? The idea, so I'm not going to tell you how it works, but the way how it works, you can either put a base on the thing so it doesn't fall out. or you. Well, the bottle doesn't fall out. Yeah, so the bottle doesn't fall out. So if you, But if you put a base on, uh, it won't pack flat. But if you don't put the base on, it will uh, pack flat. Pack flat. Pack flat. Um, but uh, the bottom might fall out. Right, yeah, because there's nothing holding it in place. Yeah. So it, I, I, we've opted to have the, bottle, the, the base in place, haven't we? Yeah. Because, you know, if you were going to come out on a show, I, I don't think you'd have this set up on the, on, on the table. You'd probably bring it out and put it on the table. Yeah. Um, okay, so that's something that you need to bear in mind. The material is made out of the same material that the uh, vending machine is made out of. So it's kind of like a plasticky sort of cardboardy type thing. Um, but we know from working with the vending machine that this will be very robust as long as you keep it safe and as long as you look after it. So here's the question. It's very easy to do, right? It's yeah. literally yeah. pick up the first box, pick up the second box, job done. But unlike the traditional squared circle, it kind of looks like the sort of thing that you carry a bottle of wine around in. It looks yeah. like a presentation box for wine. So it kind of makes sense, right? Would yeah. you do it in your show? Because, I mean, I could say, I mean, you kind of think, well, no, you're 10. Why would you produce a bottle of wine? You wouldn't do. But I could imagine you, half of your presentations in your show are about your mum. I could imagine you going, I love my mum, but she's a bit of an alcoholic. She drinks too much, and, and because I'm a magician, she just constantly asks me to make bottles of wine or beer. So, unfortunately, I have to constantly make bottles of wine for my mum because she's drunk all of the time. No, she's not. I know she's not, but I can see you doing that as a presentation. Uh, but no, I could, I could see you kind of coming up with some presentation to, to like yeah. make a bottle of wine appear on stage or a bottle of whiskey appear on stage or something like that. So, and, and this is the sort of thing that you could do to music if you wanted yeah. to. You could also do it to presentationally as a patter thing. Yeah. You could do a story to it. Hey, the other day I got home and I saw this box on the side in my uh, in my kitchen and there's nobody around. And I looked at the first box and there was nothing in there. And I looked at the second box and there was nothing in there. And then my dad walked in and he reached into the box and he pulled out a bottle of wine. And I have no idea how he did that. That's really weird. Um, or something like that. But... So what do you think? Would you put this into your show? Would you not put it into your show? I think before you answer that question, it may, it goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. This is something that you don't want to do on um, a, a close-up gig. This is not a close-up performance. You know, walk around to your banquet table. Hello, just going to put my big uh, my big box there. How you doing? Yeah, this one's empty. To top of it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, but for stage, this is absolutely great. So probably not a kid's trick, but for a stage performer that wants to make a bottle of beer or a bottle of whiskey or a bottle of uh you know champagne or whatever up here i think and this is amazing it down. Huh? and then glug it down glug right? it down oh yeah i'd love to see my show if i drunk <laughs> ladies and gentlemen i just drunk a bottle of wine this is the best trick in the world now let me just start with another trick right now no, i don't, <laughs> don't think that would work very well um so would you do it in your show and what are you gonna give it uh i think i 
No, I, I don't want to mind. Be committal. Be committed. Um, What's committal? Just leave them. It's not even a word. So be committed. Let me be committal. Let me be committal. Be committal. Committal yourself. Would you do it? Yes or no? If you don't want to do it, just say no I'm and give it 79%. I'm going to do it. You're going to do it? Yeah. You're going to try and put it in your show? Yeah, well, you know, the House of Secrets, where you regularly perform, is a bar as well. So, uh, hey, that's a nice yeah, trick. Yeah, you can do it. That's a nice trick. No, what I'm thinking is, can you imagine saying, um, you know, there's a there's a trick in magic called the, uh, you know, it, it, where something will teleport from one place and appear somewhere else, uh, like making coins disappear and appear in a bucket or something like that. I'm going to try and do something using this but using this box. Now you can see there's nothing inside this part. There's nothing inside this part. It's completely empty. I'm gonna make something disappear and appear in here. Watch, boom. And then you reach in and you pull out a half a, bo uh, a bottle that's half full of wine. And as you pull it out and it's half full of wine, you make sure that the bar staff behind the bar who are in the same room, um, you know, maybe Russ or somebody, whoever's working behind the bar, at the same time they go, Where's my wine gone? And they look back with the entire audience and look round and they're holding a glass half full of wine and, a, and, a, and, a, and a, it looks like they're holding a bottle. And the whole idea is you've made it look like you've made the bottle of wine disappear as it was being poured by the bar staff over onto the stage where you're standing. That would be funny. That would be funny. Anyway, what would you give it? Ninety percent. Yeah, I'm definitely going to do this. I do a lot of comparing. I think this is a really nice compare piece. I think this is a great MC piece. So I'm going to give this ninety percent as well. I think it's really good. Uh, it's oh, again, it's it's the sort of thing. Imagine if you got one of those things, like you know, you can, like you know, the like a pin bottle thingy. Yeah, yeah, the multiplying bottles. Yeah. Um, if you, imagine if you had like one of them in there, and then and then you kept on like showing it as empty, then pull one out. That's a brilliant idea. That's a brilliant idea. That's brilliant. Oh, I love that. That's wicked. So you just put a multiplying bottle gimmick in there. There's bottles in it. Huh? With the bottles in it. You could even. What? Oh, this is wicked. No, I love that. Yeah. What if we had a full bottle of wine at the bottom? Yeah. And then you put the gimmicks on the top. And then you do the trick and just keep on pulling my bottle up. When you get to the what final, about? And then when you get to the final one, do it, and you can show it, and then you open it and pull it in. Ah, oh, no, 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 even better idea. The last one is a bottle of tomato ketchup. <laughs> so you have like five bottles set up, and you do it to music. You have five bottles, and it's there on the table, and you're doing it to music, and you're doing it to some really funky music, like uh, some, some sort of really fun music that's like drink themed. And, and you bring out the thing and you show it empty, you bring out the thing, you show it empty, you make the bottle appear, boom, that'll get a really good reaction. Then you do it again, you do it again, boom, another reaction, do it again, do it again, another reaction. You get like five bottles and it's kind of like one more. And then you show it empty and you show it empty and you just pull out a bottle of ketchup and you go, oh well. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Dude, we gotta work on that. That's sick, that's the best idea ever. I love this. This has just got an extra 5% because of that idea. Yeah. 95%. 95%. Absolute. Dude, that's wicked. <laughs> we missed. That was the worst high five ever. I love that idea. That's brilliant. We're going to work on that. That's awesome. So the final trick that we're going to be talking about today is Leprechaun by Ricci. Mm, by Ricci. Yeah, debatable. Uh, I, I performed this on a Magic Live recently on the channel. So you might have seen me do a Magic Live about this. If you haven't, I'm going to do a performance of it to Ryland now. So let me give it a quick performance and then I'll talk about uh, what's good about it and what's not so good about it. So first of all, this is a performance of Leprechaun. So Ry, I'm going to tell you a little story, tell you, uh, do a little trick using pictures of leprechauns. <laughs> These are leprechauns. They're little Irish leprechauns. You can tell they're Irish because yeah, they've got thingy. yeah, they've got uh, an Irish hat. They're dressed in green. They've got ginger hair and they're tiny. Uh, anyway, we've got two lots of uh, leprechauns. This is the first lot. We've got a, we've got a bunch of leprechauns over here, as you can see. Yeah, 
Mm -hmm. And because they're Irish, uh, the backs are green, which kind of makes sense because, you know, when you when you think of the Irish, you think of green, right? Mm -hmm. And over here, I've got a bunch of other leprechauns. Look, leprechaun, 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 lots of leprechauns, yes? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to put one leprechaun here, and leprechauns have magic powers. Yeah. Let me explain what's going to happen. Can you see this here? Yeah. If I take one of these leprechauns and hold it face down... Don't they say that they're at the end of the rainbow? At the end of the rainbow, yeah. But if I take one of these leprechauns and turn it face down and put it right there, yeah? Mm -hmm. All I have to do is snap and say the magic words, Begara. 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 Now, when I do that, what happens is all of the leprechauns turn face down because I put a face down one on there. Mm. Let's do that again. I'll put that over there and we'll take a face up. Leprechaun, we'll take another one, we'll put it face up. Say the magic words, Begora. Begora. When you do that, what happens is they all turn face up because you said the magic word, Begora. Let's put that one over there. We'll try it again. We'll take this one, we'll turn this one face down. All you have to do is say the magic word, Begora. Begora. Just like that. Hopefully, if it's worked, yes, look at that. Now they've all turned face down. It's mm. so weird. Let's try and do it one more time. We'll take this one. You know what the magic word is? Go. Begora. And when you do that, they all turn face up. Now, I've got no other cards to put there, so I'll tell you what, we'll try it this way. Just say the magic word again, Begora. Begora. When you do that, one of them turns face down, this one right here. Mm. Try it again. Begora. Look at that. Now, another one turns face down, this one right here. I can keep doing this all day long, but here's the thing. There is something interesting that you should know. I've got all of these leprechauns, right? Uh, tons of leprechaun. That's leprechaun number one. That's leprechaun number two. Uh, that one there is leprechaun number three. This one is leprechaun number four. This is leprechaun number five. And this one here is um, Bob. Bob. I've got a bunch of leprechauns. But what did you say at the beginning? Rainbow. You find a leprechaun at the end of the rainbow, don't you? Mm -hmm. And look at this. If I just snap my fingers. Be now, that is our rainbow but what do you that one. oh sorry thank you <laughs> and what do you find at the end of a rainbow gold pots of gold right and that's what we have here gold. pots gold. of gold gold that is magic is magic it's bagara 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 so first of all let me tell you what's good about this the cards are really well made uh, the trick is really well structured. The tutorial isn't great. It's like a seven minute tutorial uh, and the seven minute tutorial explains what you need to do, but they gloss over certain things. So for example, they just say, do an Elmsley count instead of explaining what the Elmsley count is. And they do explain things like the OPEC count and the, the Orion count, but they explain it in literally like five or 10 seconds. So it's, it's not really um, very easy to follow if you are new to card handling this seven minute tutorial, you'd be very, very confused as to what's going on. I think if if you're putting a trick out like this and there's lots of moves, I think you need more, um, I, I think the tutorial needs to be more fleshed out and I think you need live performances. Now, I am not the sort of person that should really be taking exception to tricks that have been bought out that are, that are direct rip-offs of somebody else's tricks, because everybody knows my history with red. However, when I put this up on uh, Magic Week, uh, when I sorry, when I put this up on my Magic Live, Magic Live. I'm going mad. When I put this up on Magic Live, um, several people pointed out to me that this was uh, uh, an Eldo Columbini trick. Now I've heard somebody else say that on the Magic Cafe, but I just thought it was inspired by Michael uh, by a Eldo Columbini trick. <clears throat> somebody put a link to the actual video of him performing it on the LNL DVD set. I don't know how I couldn't remember it because I've watched his LNL DVD set years ago, uh, but I didn't remember this. Looks like I'm going to have to go back and rewatch them. But uh, I watched the LNL DVD. I watched the performance of Eldo doing this on L on LNL. It's identical, absolutely, completely, and totally identical. Because I've learned this. Characters. No, it's the same thing. So Eldo's routine, and Eldo's no longer with us. He's passed away, but he's an amazing magician. You would have loved him. He had an Italian accent. He was, hello, my name is Eldo Colombini. He was a big, larger-than-life character. And he, imagine Mario. Imagine Mario, <laughs> but slightly bigger. It's me, it's Eldo. It was that kind of thing, right? And he was, he was amazing. His magic was really strong. He's unfortunately no longer with us. But uh, his legacy lives on. Anyway, um, 
I, I, the trick is identical. Like, absolutely identical. Well, no, no that, 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 it, that his original trick uses leprechauns, and um, the, 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 the kickers are exactly the same. I mean, the, it's identical. There's absolutely no difference. Because I'd learned this, I'd learned the moves for this as well. Um, I could watch and I could look at the moves that were taking place on Eldo's original thing, and and there's no difference at all. And the thing is, I don't think that they've gone to Eldo's estate and got permission to actually do this, because if they had, they would be talking about it on the packaging, and they would be talking about it in the um, tutorial. But they've never mentioned Eldo Columbini once. They've never said, hey, thank you to Eldo Columbini's estate for allowing us to produce this trick. They've never credited Eldo Columbini. No, no mention of Eldo Columbini. You can't wipe somebody out from the history books just because you've decided not to include them on the tutorial when you're ripping their trick off. And that's what's happening here. And you know what? I, I, I refuse to believe that this was independent creation. I know independent creation exists, but this is identical. I mean, this is leprechauns. The handling is exactly the same. The kickers are exactly the same. I'm sure this is not independent creation. And yes, you could have learnt it and forgotten about it and then, um, you know, like uh, um, later on reimagined it. I know that's possible. But even if that's the case, so many people are saying this is Eldo's trick and nobody's doing anything about it. So, I, I, you know, what I advise you to do if you like this trick is I advise you to go and buy the Eldo Columbini L and L DVD set. He performs it and explains it on there, and then and then you can go and make these up yourself. You know, you could very easily go to somewhere like Print by Magic and ask them to make a single uh, setup for yourself. I think that's probably the way to go. What the way to go is not to. Uh, and th this is just a direct rip off. I'm sorry. It's a great trick. It's an amazing trick, but it gets zero percent because. It's not Rishi's trick, whoever Rishi is. I've never heard of him before. Nothing about Eldo Columbini. Oh, no, no, no. It does say there, a tribute to Eldo Columbini. A tribute to Eldo Columbini. So, so hang on, you're, you're paying tribute to Eldo Columbini by ripping his trip off. That's, 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 that's not a tribute to Eldo Columbini. That's, that's profiteering from Eldo Columbini's that's name. So that's even worse. So he knows it's an Eldo Columbini trick. It's not like he's gone to their estate, unless I'm wrong. And if I am wrong, I very much apologise to you, Rishi. But unless, if, if I'd have gone to Eldo's estate and said, hey, I want to put this trick, up, uh, this trick out as my own, and they said yes, I would be shouting about this from the rooftops. That would be exactly what the trailer would be based on. But it's not. They're not saying this. They're saying a tribute to Eldo Columbini. So is that okay now? Can I, uh, uh, can I attribute his... Right, okay, so let's say... Um, what name a band that you like or a musician that you like? Mm, Papa Roach. Pa <laughs> Papa Roach, brilliant, brilliant, and suddenly Craig Petty gets parent of the year award. <sighs> brilliant. Okay, so. so <laughs> Right, okay, so Papa Roach. <laughs> <laughs> Why couldn't you say Spice Girls? Why couldn't you say somebody else? Anybody else? Anyone? Why couldn't you say Take That, Robbie Williams? Anyone? Elton John? I don't care. Anyone? Not Papa Roach. <laughs> Imagine that, like, there was a band of people. Because Papa Roach is busy. They can't perform everywhere. So imagine if like a bunch of people got together and they dressed like Papa Roach and they sung the music of Papa Roach and they went out and did gigs. They would be a Papa Roach tribute act. So in other words, they're doing the music of Papa Roach, but they're not Papa Roach. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, so by they're saying they're a tribute to Aldo Columbini, they're saying that this trick is is Eldo Columbini's trick and they're just releasing it as their own. But the thing is, it's very, very different when you're releasing magic tricks, right? I, 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 you can... Is this okay now? Is this okay? Um, if David Penn is watching this, uh, I plan next month to release uh, my version of Coinbex 3. I'm calling it uh, uh, Coin Curl and uh, it's going to be my tribute to David Penn. 
Uh, what else am I going to do? I'm going to do, uh, yeah, I'm going to be doing um, uh, a version of Paper Clipped. It's coming out next month by Jay Sankey. I'm doing a version of Paper Clipped. It's called, uh, it's called um, Get, Get Bent. And it's going to be uh, my version of, uh, it's going to be a tribute to Jay Sankey, basically. I, I just, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I can't condone this. Um, so I'm giving it 0%. Uh, it's identical. Minus in infinity. Yeah, well, it's it's it's. I can't condone it. I, uh, you know, whatever. I I think you should get the original DVD. Maybe if there were some changes, or maybe if it was like, hey, multiple new handlings. But it's not. It's a seven-minute tutorial teaching in a very lackluster way a trick that's identical to a trick that was created by one of the greatest creators of our time. Minus whatever he said, and zero percent from me. There's no review show in the bag. There's no review show in the bag. There's no review show in the bag. It is another review show in the bag. Thank you. I no, you didn't fall. That was good. Uh, thank you. You didn't push me. I didn't push you. Thanks very much for joining us right here on Magic TV. Don't forget, if you want to see more videos like this, like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. I'm going to be back again tomorrow with a whole bunch more videos without the Kid Magician. And please don't forget that if you want to follow him on Instagram, do you know you've got a reach on Facebook of six and a half million? A lot. It's, it's a fair amount, I think, yes. Um, so you can follow him on Facebook, you can follow him on Instagram, you can follow him on YouTube. It's, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. You just keep making your videos. So. Um, anyway, follow him. And if you want to go and join the Netflix, please go to... www.thenetrix.cookies Yeah, go for that. We'll be back next week with another video. Thanks very much for watching. I'm Craig. I'm Ryan. We'll see you again. Take care. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.